Welcome to the 2018 installment of our Football Officials Video Training Series. We're studying the National Federation of High School Rules, Five Man Mechanics. This video is produced by the Arkansas Association of High School Officials. Visit our website, aahso.com. We're helping good officials get better. Technical assistance provided by Dax Hill, Greg Nallum, John Duncan, and George Demetrio. Produced by Matt Bivens. Our executive producer is Walt Coleman. I'm your host, Todd Allen. If you've been around this video training series for any length of time, you know how much I depend on the Reading Study Guide to give me a clear and concise understanding of the rules. George's writing style makes it simple to dig down deep and get a clear understanding of the rules, and the application of the rules are just as important. Plus, there's challenging quizzes and tests and great diagrams. It's just a fun book to read the rules and understand and get better as a football official. Couple that with this video training series, and I promise you're going to be a better football official. The Reading Study Guide in the NFHS Football Rules. When you're you're through learning, you're through. Let's take a look at this play, and I want you to focus on uh, this receiver here, who's going to be the line judge, just bottom of the screen. This is his key, and watch him as we go down the field here. And uh, I'm just not going to say anything, I just want you to watch the play first. So the call we make is defensive pass interference, and what we've got here is two players that are both playing the ball. When we go to slow motion, watch the defender's head turn around, and he does reach for the ball. Now there is a little bit of hand fighting here, but both players are engaged in it, and the important thing to remember when you watch these types of plays, the first thing is, and this is true in all fouls, make them big. Does this jump out at you on the field? And my question would be, because this is wide open in space with two players competing for the ball, the back judge has no opinion. And we can say by having no opinion is he's not throwing a flag. So good job for the back judge not getting a me too moment here. But uh, I just want to challenge you on these types of plays. Look for things like both players playing the ball with this incidental contact or hand fighting. Um, that's not, you don't want those to be a foul. When you have one player playing the ball and the other player is not playing the ball and you have this hand contact, then you're much more likely to have a foul for defensive pass interference. Defender has inside position. Ball is maybe slightly underthrown, but uh, the receiver has a chance to catch it and just doesn't make the catch. We don't want to bail these guys out. Defensive pass interference, we want to be a big foul. Everybody in the house should be saying, yeah, that, that was a foul. But this is not a big play. Be very, very careful with these. We want these fouls to be big when we call defensive pass interference. Let's do a quick rule review before we look at this next play. And the rule that I want to look at is 7.5.12 which says that an ineligible A player may not advance beyond the expanded neutral zone on a legal forward pass play before a legal forward pass that crosses the neutral zone is in flight. If B touches the pass in or behind the neutral zone, this restriction is terminated. An ineligible is not illegally downfield if at the snap he immediately contacts a B lineman and the contact does not continue beyond the expanded neutral zone. So what is the neutral zone expanded? To find that, of course, we need to go to Rule 2. And that's in Rule 2.28.2, which says the neutral zone may be expanded following the snap up to a maximum of two yards behind the defensive line of scrimmage in the field of play during any scrimmage down. Now, what's this mean? This means that two yards from the spot the ball is snapped, we're going to have a hard plane. And any ball that's thrown forward legally beyond the line of scrimmage, no ineligible players may be beyond that hard plane, which is two yards. Now, let's look at this play. This is going to be a punt play, and you know the game would be so much more, uh, so much easier to officiate if we would take these kick plays out of it. But that's not going to happen. So, from where this ball is snapped, if we go two yards and draw a line right here, so this line, no A players. If we're going to throw a forward pass beyond this neutral zone, no A players may be beyond this line. That's what it means. So we look at this, and we get a punt that's blocked, and the punter picks it back up and then throws this forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. So I freeze it right here because this is where the ball is leaving the hands of the punter. So we've got this player, this player, and this player all beyond this hard plane. 
when the forward pass that goes beyond the neutral zone leaves the passer's hand. So real simple, all these players are ineligible downfield. This is tough on kick plays. That's why it's so important on your game card to have the number of eligibles written down so they're easy to find. But these are all big linemen. This is not hard at all. We know these guys, if they get beyond this hard plane, they are ineligibles downfield. None of them are wearing eligible numbers. In all the confusion, we missed this. And we have a foul for an ineligible downfield, but maybe we don't understand the rule, or maybe we get caught up in this kick getting blocked and in the forward pass and who's eligible and who's not. But that's all pretty simple on this play. Uh, nothing routine about it, but we've got to catch these types of plays. And this is something that umpires, when you see the uh the play is busted and you see that the potential for a pass, you need to come up to and what might be a great position for you is instead of coming all the way to the line of scrimmage is just come to this solid red line and then know where the line of scrimmage is because we may need help from you with quarterbacks beyond or behind the line of scrimmage because with five officials, that's a very tough call for us. But the important thing is here, have an understanding of what is an ineligible receiver downfield, an understanding of the expanded neutral zone, and then on every play where there's a potential for a forward pass, even if it starts a kick play, know where that spot is, and if the play busts up or something crazy happens, be ready to get this as a foul. Here's where you'll begin to separate yourself from other officials working high school football. All right, let's take a look at this interesting play. This could be the last one I'm going to get to today, although I've got several more I'd love to, but just uh, time, time, time. Um, So this play, interesting. Holding is one of the most difficult plays that we uh, we have. It's a complete judgment call, and we try to give you some guidance on those, try to show you some plays. And, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is that uh, holding needs to be a material restriction. And uh, although it doesn't talk about material restriction in the uh, rule book, it's a real simple way of knowing that a hold is not a technique. A hold is the result of something happening. So you can have poor technique, hands on the outside, wrap around a guy, but you don't material restrict him, and uh, there is no foul. The other thing we like to talk about is holding's legal. Two exceptions, point of attack and effect on the play. If holding occurs somewhere other than one of those two exceptions, we don't want it called because holding is one of those things so subjective you could call it on every play. Well, we don't want to do that. So we want to get the ones that matter. We want them to be big. The other, the only other exception to all of that is going to be holds that occur out in space that everybody in the stadium sees. We want those called too. They're just good game management tools. And you just kind of got to get a feel for what is and what isn't. So one of the things we can do to try to help you get a feel of it is uh, watch some plays. And this is a pretty simple play. We're just going to hand off and get to the outside. Got a little speedster here. And uh, watch this wide receiver right here. And uh, you see that this is the, the ball is going out of bounds here, but this is right at the point of attack. So back, Judge, you're looking right where we want you to look. Perfect position, focused right in on what we want to see, and you're exactly right. This is offensive holding. No, look at the uh, defender. Notice how he tries to get away and his shoulder dips. I mean, that's the material restriction that we're looking for. Point of attack, you can make an argument that doesn't have any effect on the play, but that's the second exception. The other exception is point of attack. This is right at the point of attack. And the other thing that we do that is just so, so revealing to what we were looking at is all of this action where we grab the flag, cock the flag, get ready to throw it, and then don't. And then the coach looks at this on tape and loses his mind, rightfully so. This is an offensive hold right at the point of attack, out in space. Everybody saw it. One that we want to get. Your instincts are right. This is a foul, one you should throw on. Trust your instincts. Because if you had made this call, you would have gotten a correct call for offensive holding. All right, I know I said this was going to be my last play a while ago, but this is definitely going to be the last play. Everyone's giving me a hard time pushing the clock, but hey, we're all right. Calm down, everybody. This is going to be quick. 4.2.3, inadvertent whistle. If we blow the whistle while the ball is loose on the ground, the team that fumbled the ball has the choice. They take it at the spot they fumbled it, the down counts, or they can replay the down. Totally up to them. The other team has nothing to say about it. We just got to explain to them it's an inadvertent whistle. Here's the rule. Just got to own it. It's all we can do. Nothing we're going to say that's going to make the situation better. They're really, really bad. But we'll, let's take a look at this play. We just get a reverse here around the outside. And I'm going to point out a couple of things to this official at the bottom of the screen here. Don't know if this is a headlinesman or the line judge. Doesn't matter. But look at the ball right here now. Clearly out. 
Back judge, great position, looking right where we want to do. Gets a bean bag out, indicating the ball is loose, um, and uh, there is a fumble. And but look at the position of the of the line of scrimmage official here. So clearly out of position to rule on this player being down. Um, doesn't see that the ball is fumbled. Thinks he sees something else. Blows his whistle, and then comes in and oversells the call. Like, I saw something that no one else in the stadium saw. But the reality is that you didn't see it. And so you cannot just be really, really careful. Don't oversell a call. So um, on this play, this is something for line of scrimmage officials. And you just got to live by this. And I can't emphasize this enough. Never blow the whistle unless you can see the ball. I've worked with officials, players on the ground, laying on his back, ball is on my side, and the official on the back side of the play blows a whistle. I know he can't see the ball, and he's blowing the whistle. That's dangerous because you end up with an inadvertent whistle. Much better to have no whistle, and we close in on the play, and everybody gives up, and then we blow a late whistle. Or umpires, plays that go up the middle, and you're the only one that can see the ball on the ground. Give us a whistle. That's great. We want the play to end with a whistle. And we've kind of gotten away from, you know, the, the pendulum's kind of swung the other way. We used to say it's fine to end a play with no whistle, but we want to play at the end of the whistle, uh, the whistle at the end of the play, I should say, to signal that the down uh, the play has ended. So, but we just cannot blow the whistle when we think the ball is down. You just got to wait and know the ball is down, or every player on the field has given up on the play. And none of that is, is evident on this play at all. It's a tough play, you know, as far as how we handled it, but we made our own problem here. So, live by that rule. Not just line of scrimmage officials. Any official on the field, unless you physically see the ball in a player's possession and he is on the ground, do not blow it. We had a play a couple years ago in a championship game. Line of scrimmage official blows a ball, uh, blows a play as an incomplete pass when it's clearly a fumble. Referee working fumble. So that's just another example of not only do you have to know where the ball is, but you have to know how the ball got there, especially if it's loose on the ground. Much better to let it play out, get together as a crew, sort it out, get the play right. Ultimately, that's always our goal. Get the play right. you got to ask yourself, ask your crew this this Friday night. Hey, guys, what's more important, that we look good or that we are good? Make that decision. It's a lot easier to handle these plays. And you won't end up with plays that end with an inadvertent whistle. That's it for this week. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I know I ran a little bit wrong. I've got three or four plays here that I wanted to get to um, that I didn't even just get a chance to put together. Uh, plays from Oklahoma. Uh, John sent a couple of plays in. Just lots of stuff that we could have gotten to. Hopefully next week will be better. Try to make a little longer video if I can. Um, also, a ton of emails this week. Great stuff. Keys, coverages, equipment, um, kicks out of bounds. Um, just a lot of great conversations. If I didn't answer your email, I'm sorry. Uh, keep sending them in. I appreciate what what you do in time with the videos, time that you're spending with your crews, talking about things that you see on here, sending in the emails, sending plays in. You guys are doing a heck of a job. we got some things we can be better on, but uh, we'll get to that. The thing is we got to just keep working. Keep listening. Have an open mind. Think about how we do things. Be willing to change our approach. Be willing to get better, even if it means doing something we've never done before. That's what it's about. When you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Thanks, George Demetrio. Uh, anything I can do for you, here's my email address. It's Todd at A-A-H-S-O. Thanks so much for sending everything in. Until next week. For the Arkansas Association of High School Officials, this is Todd Allen saying I hope to see you on the field real soon. <laughs>